Let's talk about data types. So what's a data type? It's a standardized representation for a particular kind of data. So we're going to look at the most common ones that we'll be using when we write our VBA Excel programs. And for each one, we care about certain things. What it's used for in a program, the potential range of values it can store, and what kind of operations we can do on it. Okay, now to talk about um, the range of values and the amount of information we can store, it helps to think about the bits. Uh, if you have one bit, you can have two values, 0 and 1. You cannot find a way to represent more than two values if all you have is one bit. That's it. Okay, so you need more bits. Well, if you have two bits, you can represent four values, and I wrote them down here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Four values, that's it. Three bits, you have eight values. I could take all these four values and put a zero in front, or I could take all these four values and put a one in front, and that would give me the eight values. Now, every time I add a bit, I can do the same thing, put a zero in front of the ones I had before, or put a one in front of the things I had before. And that means that every time I add a bit, I double the number of values I can represent. So if I have n bits, I can represent two to the n values, okay, and um, that's the most that I can represent. Now, let's take a look at particular kinds of data, and we're going to start with text, because often we want to store textual data. Text is made up of characters. Now, this raises an issue that's very important. Um, we want to be able to use our program and give it to other people and have it work not just on our computer, but on their computer too, on all kinds of computers. And to make that happen, we have to have standards. We need a standard way to represent text so that every computer knows that if it sees a certain pattern of bits, which character that's supposed to represent. Um, originally, eight bits were used to represent one character, and the standard character code was called ASCII. Um, now, using our formula with 8 bits, we can encode at most 2 to the 8th combinations. That's 256 different characters we can have. So, okay, um, well, there's 26 uppercase letters, there's 26 lowercase letters, there's 10 digits, there's um, how many punctuation marks, maybe, you know, 10 or 15. Um, then there are weird characters like letters with umlauts. But 256 characters is probably enough uh, to represent certainly English and most European languages, even those with, you know, O's with lines through them and etc. But once we get beyond those languages and we want to do other alphabets, of which there are very many, um, not to mention Chinese characters, then 256 is way too little. So. Um, Things have moved on, and instead of using ASCII, now there's a thing called Unicode, which is 16 bits, and you can see that's hugely more possibilities. Um, and so with using 16 bits per character, we can represent all these different kinds of characters. Now, the type of, uh, the data type that represents strings of characters in VBA is called a string. Some languages have a separate data type for strings versus individual characters. A VBA doesn't. A, a string can have just one character or no characters. It can be empty. Or can have up to about two billion, so it can be huge. A whole book for sure. Okay, operations on strings. Well, um, most of the operations we do on strings are going to be done with built-in functions rather than operators. So we'll look at some of those later on in the course. But there is one string operator you should know about, and that's the concatenation operator, which is represented by ampersand. And what that does is it sticks two strings together to make a third string. So if I have a, a string called hello with a space at the end and another string there, and I stick them together with the ampersand, then my new value is going to be hello there. Okay? All right, numbers are another thing we often want to represent, especially in spreadsheets. 
And typically there's two fundamental classes of numbers. Uh, and there may even be separate hardware to do the arithmetic operations on them. So uh, these are generically integer and floating point. So integer numbers are used when we want to count things. So they're typically whole numbers. And Excel actually has two integer types called integer and long. So the integer type is two bytes and the long type is four bytes. Now in two bytes, that's um, 16 characters, uh, we can get about 64,000 different combinations. Um, and half of them are used for negative numbers and half for positive numbers. Well, it turns out that's not enough because a spreadsheet can actually have more than that many rows. So um, typically it's better to use long. Uh, these shorter data types were introduced when computer memory was much more expensive than it is now. And now there's really not much reason to use a shorter data type um, unless you have, you know, gigantic amounts of data, which you probably won't. Okay, the other type of numerical data is floating point. And this is more, this is the one you use for general computations. Anytime a decimal point might possibly be involved, you're not necessarily working with huge, with um, integer numbers or if you're working with really huge numbers. So um, internally they're used, they're stored in a form that's like scientific notation, if you're familiar with that. So there's a, uh, a mantissa, the part that contains the actual digits that are in the number, and then an exponent that says how many zeros to tack on to get the actual number that we're interested in. Excel has two floating point types, single, which is four bytes, and double, which is eight bytes. Obviously, double has way more precision, and we'll typically use double. Okay, now for numbers, there's all the usual arithmetic operations, and we'll be seeing those in action as we go along. Uh, but there, I do want to make one point about precedence. So if I have an expression like 2 plus 3 times 4, precedence applies, which means that you do the multiplication before you do the addition. So the value of this expression is 12 plus 2, 14, and not 5 times 4, 20, okay? So it means this. It means first do this, the 3 times 4, and then add the 2. If you want it this way, add 2 and 3 and then multiply by 4, use the parentheses. And if you're not sure about precedence, you can always use parentheses. It doesn't hurt, and that way you're completely sure what's going to happen. Now, if you happen to mix integers and floating point numbers in the same expression, typically the result you get will be a floating point number, unless you force it the other way, and we'll see some ways of forcing things to be different data types later. Um, there's also a chance that operations like taking the exponent will lead you to a floating point number, even if both of the things, um, the, the base and the exponent, are integers, just because that number can get too big to be represented as an integer. Okay, another data type is logical values, and these are called Boolean. They're named in honor of George Boole, who was a logician, and they can only have two values, true and false. So as opposed to all the possible values for integers or strings, which are billions and billions, there's only two values for Booleans. Booleans in VBA Excel are two bytes. Why? Um, because we talked in an earlier lecture it's actually uh, less efficient to have the computer go down into um, a quantity and pick out one byte than it is to use a whole chunk. So uh, in a trade-off between time and space, at this point, time is more valuable. Space is really, really cheap, um, meaning memory. So um, we use two bytes to make things faster. Now there's some interesting operations on Booleans, logical operations such as AND, OR, and NOT. And we'll be looking at those um, in the next module when we talk about conditionals. In VBA, dates are their own data type. Um, and they're a kind of numerical data type. They, they take up eight bytes and you can have a date between January 1st of um, the year 100 and December 31st 9999. So hopefully for most purposes that range of dates is adequate. Um, 
There's a basic display format for dates, so of course you can pick another format if you want to. And internally, starting with January 1st, 1900, dates are also represented by a number. Um, it's one on the 1st of January, 1900, and it goes on up from there. And Excel is actually pretty clever about working with these numbers. So you can add a number like 7 to a date and get the date for a week from that day. And it even works if you have to go into a new month or even a new year. Excel will figure out what the date should be. Now there's plenty of other data types. And we'll work, for example, with a range type, which refers to a range of cells. So um, it's not just basic data. There's other kinds of data that you can use, too. Uh, we'll add those as we go along. And then um, there's also what's called a variant data type, which can be any data type. It's like a grab bag of any data type. Um, the problem with data with variant is that there are actually some pretty huge data types. And um, when you use variant, it has to use enough space for the biggest data type there is. So you want to avoid those as much as you can. Now, when we start to use variables in our programs, um, we're going to always declare them, which is to say up front what their data type is. You don't have to do this necessarily in Excel. You can let Excel deduce the data type. Now, the problem with doing that is that if you make a typo when you're typing your program, um, Excel will just think that this typo name is a whole new variable. And this can give you a very, very hard to find bug in your program. So we want to avoid that. We'll use option explicit um, to force, to, to tell Excel that we um, want to be forced to declare all our variables. This is an excellent programming practice. So the way you declare a variable in VBA is you use what's called a dim statement. You write the word dim. You write your variable name, which you make up. You write the word as, and you write the word long. And I'm making these blue because these are keywords, and the Visual Basic Editor, which we'll be looking at soon, uh, will make them blue to show you that it's a keyword. Uh, so Dim says we're getting ready to declare a variable. Then we give the name, the word as, and the data type. So here we're declaring var a as a long. Instead of Dim, you can use the word const for constant. And here I'm declaring a constant with the value 1. A constant's value can't change, but they're often very useful to use because um, they can make your program much more readable than if you use an actual number. And we'll see examples of this when we get into the programming. Uh, I'm using kind of generic names in my examples here, but in an actual program, we're going to want to use meaningful names for everything. Uh, that, again, makes our programs much, much more readable. Uh, there are a few rules. You can't use a keyword as a variable name. The name has to start with a letter. Um, it can use letters, numbers, and underscores, uh, and some other punctuations, not dots. And it can be up to 255 characters long. We're going to start all variable names with a lowercase letter. And we're going to have a number of rules like this, which may seem picky, but um, it's all in, the, uh, in a good cause of showing you how to write a program that you can come back to later and quickly read and understand. So um, bear with me. That's going to be a requirement to do something like that. Here's an example of a long descriptive name. For example, primary interest rate. Um, I can write it like this, what's called camel case, by making a capital letter for the beginning of each internal word. Or I can separate words with underscores. Either one's the same. And the other thing to know is VBA does not distinguish by case. So this name with a capital A and this name with a little a are the same name as far as VBA is concerned. Finally, um, things are not always the same in Visual Basic uh, VBA as they are in Excel, uh, which is a little weird, but it's the way it is. So each one has their own built-in functions, which could be different their own precedence rules, then they can even be different even with the same name. So um, this won't come up that often for us, but you should just be aware that it's a possibility.